Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Alien Covenant. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins when a modern and broad landscape is shown. The environment implies that because of the modern and unusual characteristics of the surroundings, the setting is set in the future. One moment, Whalen speaks on his newly activated android, on which he named David. David is wearing a white outfit, and all of his movements are so calculated that it makes it easy to identify that he is not a human. David is a perfect creature. He knows every piece of information about the world, and can pretty much do everything he has been assigned to do. However, as all-knowing as he is, David will always be inferior to his creator, Wayland. Wayland tells him that he is his father. Wayland is proud of his creature, because it is the best version of all the versions he has made. David, being curious about his father, asks Wayland that if he created him, then who created his father in the first place? Wayland says that it is the question that humanity has been seeking to answer for centuries already. The father does not believe that the human sprouted just because of some biological coincidence. Wayland believes that there should be something more in the world, and he says to his android, David, that he is looking forward to answering the question together. He agrees with everything his creature says. After a moment, David comments on the limited lifespan of humans. He says he has a lot of time to seek the answer, because an android could not die. However, he reiterates his father Wayland's mortality, and that one day, he will die of natural causes soon. The android's comments put Wayland unsettled, annoyed that he does not have all the time in the world. The film is set in the future wherein androids are made to assist humankind. However, as advanced as it looks, it is shown in the movie's first scenes that the ultimate question of humanity about their existence remains unanswered. After the introductory scenes, a time skip is shown in the movie. It is now the year 2104, 11 years after the tragic outer space mission called the Prometheus. Astronauts and scientists are seen boarding the spaceship called Covenant, aiming to find a new colony for humanity. They expect to reach the new planet seven years from their current time. The spaceship carries 2,000 colonists and more than 1,000 human embryos, intended to live on the newly discovered planet. As they are traveling through space, the spaceship alarms all the scientists that a solar flare has damaged a part of the Covenant. Trying to fix the issue, the team collectively works, and pinpoints where the flare is coming from. However, in the middle of the tragedy, the spaceship's captain is burned to death because one of the stasis pods malfunctions. Along with the ship's captain, 47 colonists also lost their lives during the solar flare encounter. The Covenant's first officer is assigned to be the next captain to follow the chain of command. In their meeting to talk about the issue, the team wants to commemorate the late captain's death. However, the new captain orders them not to do anything unnecessary, but rather, continue repairing the broken ship. In the new captain's defense, they could not take a risk to chill, because there might be another solar flare encounter incoming. He says that it is better to be vigilant, so they will not risk the colonists' lives ever again. While repairing the ship, one of the crewmates goes outside to fix something on their spaceship. Not long after doing his work, he picks up a strange signal nearby. As he tries to go back to the rest of the team, his helmet acts weird, and picks up a sound similar to a human's voice. After a short panic, the signal goes away, and he returns to the ship safely. This strange happening makes the scientists very curious. To learn more about the signal, they hold a meeting to find out in which area the signal is located. Interestingly, they find the signal on a planet that is very similar to Earth. After spending so many years to reach their discovered planet, the scientists find that out of nowhere, and there is a very near planet that is even more habitable for humanity. The team concludes that the signal they took was a human voice, implying a potential life on this new planet. For the team this discovery is massive, because they could skip seven years of waiting, and immediately start a colony on this newfound habitat. The ship's captain is very enthusiastic about this discovery, and orders the team to pursue it instead. Not long after the meeting, a girl scientist named Daniels asks the captain to talk in private. As they go into a private area, Daniels immediately tells the captain that this new planet is too good to be true, and they should be cautious about it. She suggests that they should continue with their original plan to go to the planet they have been studying for years, because it gives them and the colonists more security. However, the captain disagrees, and says that the opportunity they are having is too good to be ignored. He believes that the sound they picked up is a sign of life on the planet. The captain reiterates his mission to always put first the colonists' welfare, and he believes that this planet will do them justice. Annoyed and defeated, Daniels goes out of the room with a heavy heart. Because of the captain's decision, the team immediately changes their direction to the new planet. 
the storm makes it hard for the spaceship to go into the planet. Still, the team continues and finds themselves very near the targeted location. Travel to the planet is really risky. Nonetheless, the spaceship goes through its space without any casualties. As they are nearing their arrival, the team sends an expedition team to investigate the new potential colony. To do it, they board a small lander, and they successfully land in the lake nearby. All of the members of the expedition team go out of the lander, except for Maggie. While the team is out investigating, Maggie will secure the safeness of their vehicle. As they go out of the lander, the team is mesmerized by the fact that the planet resembles Earth. Vegetation such as wheat, and necessities such as food, water, and raw materials are easily accessible. Out of all the persons involved in the expedition, the captain is the one that is most enthusiastic about the discovery. At first, it is obvious that this discovery is life-changing, especially for the colonists. While walking the terrain, one of the team members goes into the middle of the forest to take a leak. Strangely, as the man is taking a break, some fungus-like organisms have gotten inside the man's ears. Bothered, he brushes it off, and continues with the exploration. The team continues to explore deeper into the mountains. While walking, they find a strange, peculiar cave sitting just in the middle of the forest. Strange enough, another one of the team members is also infected by the fungus-like organisms. Inside the cave, they find a device that activated some sort of a hologram. Upon activating, they realize that they have found the source of the signal that they are looking for. Shaw, one of the lead scientists of the Prometheus Project 11 years ago, was the one singing in the caught signal. They realize that the team of scientists before them had already set foot on the planet. However, there are no signs that these people survived the mission. On the other side, the first infected man is rapidly deteriorating. Because of this, the team decides to have an emergency retreat to the lander. The infected teammate is having difficulties breathing and showing signs of diseases on his skin. To treat the patient, the team locks him up inside the medicine room. However, not long after they put him inside the room, to everybody's shock, a small, pale alien creature burst out of the teammate's body, leaving him dead. Not long after the bloody incident, this alien is not done killing people. One of the women in the spaceship is left behind in the medicine room. When she sees the scary appearance of the alien, she begs Maggie to let her out of the room. However, Maggie denies her request, because they need to quarantine the alien infection. Trying to fight the alien, she picks up a knife to try to kill it. But in no luck, the creature overpowers her with such ease. After fighting for her life, the alien traces the female hormones, and goes to one of the female scientists, and mauls her to death. Knowing about the incident, Maggie, the woman left behind in the lander, picks up a shotgun to try to shoot the alien. Because of the creature's speed, Maggie has a hard time hitting the target. Because of her missed attempts, she triggers an explosion to the spaceship, leaving her dead and their vehicle burning. As the team is rushing to retreat, another alien creature bursts out to one of the team members. Seeing the alien, team uses all their force to kill the creature, but all of their efforts have only shown nothing to little effect. Because of the darkness and the tall grass, the team is having a hard time locating the enemies. After shooting merely air, the aliens cause another two lives, but fortunately, a strange man comes to the scene and saves everyone from being mauled to death. The man uses some kind of device that makes the aliens run away from the fight scene. This strange man wearing a robe orders the team to follow him for their safety. After a long walk, the strange man leads them to a temple, introducing himself as a man called David. David explains that he has come from the Prometheus team. Along with his partner, he accidentally released a pathogen 11 years ago that eradicated all the living organisms on the planet. He also says that his partner, Shaw, died when their spaceship crashed. Being safe for a while in their found sanctuary, the team immediately tries to contact the Covenant to save them from the tragedy. However, because of the ion storms, the signal in their area is very low, and cannot connect to outer space. While the surviving team is resting, another alien creature infiltrates the temple. After sneaking inside the building, the alien finds one of the team members, and attacks her using sharp, tongue-like parts of its body. Learning about the attack, David comes in contact with the alien, and tries to communicate with it. However, the captain thinks that there is no sane reason that they should communicate with these monsters. Asserting his belief, he takes his gun, and shoots the alien dead. Because of the strange behavior of David towards the alien, the captain becomes more suspicious of him. The captain asks David to tell him all about these creatures. Entertaining the question, David explains that these creatures are the results of his experiments with the pathogens that may produce new life forms. Underground the building, 
David shows the captain his current works so far. However, David deceives the captain by saying that his works are harmless. We realize that David is a sociopath. He is playing God by creating his own perfect creatures that will soon eradicate humanity. Not long after the captain goes near the man's works, he is surprised and attacked by an alien, which jumps onto him to maul his face, leaving him dead. Because of this, a new, disgusting alien life form has burst out through the captain's chest, which seems to hurt a lot like delivering a fat baby. As the remaining surviving team finds the dead members, Walter, the updated android of David, finds Shaw's dissected corpse. Walter realizes that David lied to them by saying that his partner, Shaw, died because of the ship crash. Right then, David comes to the scene and defends his works. He says that humanity is a dying race and his creatures will eradicate humanity and replace them. Walter disagrees and starts fighting David, allowing the remaining team members to escape. Since Walter is the updated version of David, he's stronger in might and seems to gain the upper hand in the fight. A while later, the Covenant comes to the planet to save the remaining members. Even though the pilot has difficulties navigating the planet, he successfully reaches the team. The spaceship extracts Daniels, Walter, and another surviving teammate from the ground, saving them from impending death. Being curious about the enemy, the team asks Walter what happened to David. The android replies that they do not need to worry, because David had already expired. The next morning the group realize that another alien has burst out through the teammate's chest. What's more, this alien kills a married couple on the team, while they are taking a hormone bath. With the remaining team's effort of Daniels, the pilot, and Walter, they try to kick the ugly alien out of the spaceship. Walter plays a vital role in pinpointing where the alien is, by handling the cameras and telling the team the location of the enemy. After a long hide-and-seek, the pilot and Daniels successfully deceives the alien and lures it into the terraforming bay, before successfully ejecting it into deep space, for it to be burned with a gravitational force. After the victory, Daniels and the team continue their voyage to the original planet that they have been planning to use as a colony. To skip a long time, and with the help of Walters, Daniels goes inside one of the stasis pods to rest and fall asleep. However, as the pod is about to lock Daniels, she realizes that Walter is really dead, and David stole his identity. Knowing this, Daniels tries to break out through the stasis pod to confront David. However, it is too late for her to escape. It's revealed that even though Walter is the updated version with more might and skills than David, Walter loses the fights due to more humanity gifted by his creator. The horror does not end. We realize that David has become a parasite to their spaceship the last few days. The original plan of David to create his perfect creatures would be convenient for their voyage to the planet. This marks the potential eradication of humanity forever. With the control of David, the Covenant pushes through the voyage. In the end, it is seen that David put some of his alien embryos into the cold storage, which is supposedly made for human embryos. To continue his plan, he continues posing as Walters and tells all team members that all of the casualties are only caused by the solar flare incident. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.